Going back to the story we just had the film on there, we're joined now by the author and journalist Kate Welsh. Welcome to the program. A uh, recent free speech ranking survey by Spite said that 94% of UK universities have censored free speech in the past year. Some have no platform, people like Germaine Greer, Roger Scruton, and a human rights activist called Miriam Namazi. Are you happy with that? I don't believe it's censorship. I believe that freedom of speech is also freedom to accept the consequences of that speech. And if that means that certain institutions don't want uh, to promote or give you a platform to say these things, then you have to accept that. Really? Yes, I do. That's, that's not uh, curtailing freedom of speech? No, I don't think it is. Um, well, people, people, but, but, people, people like Jermaine Greer. But you've really just taken away the freedom of these people to speak at the university. They can speak wherever they like, but, that, but it's, freedom of speech is not freedom to be invited wherever you want. Um, what's the point being, of a university if you don't allow a variety of views to be expressed? A variety of views, that's absolutely fine. Well, clearly um, not if you're Jermaine Greer. I think if students are being asked to pay increasingly higher fees, and I think that if they object to um, people like Jermaine Greer, Julie Bindel, Milo Yiannopoulos uh, being given frequently pretty hefty speaking fees themselves and be given a platform at their university. Julie then I think Bindle they have doesn't a right take fees for that. Julie Bindle does okay. not take fees. And she has worked for 30 years raising awareness of violence against women and done so, you know, thanklessly. And for her to be barred from universities simply because she has a different view to you or some of the people in that university about transgender issues is a disgrace, as it is with Peter Tatchell. I, I mean, think... It, and hold on, that, hold on. Let, let, uh, let uh, to Kate Welsh To say that Welsh they're getting money for it, it, it it's absolutely legal. Kate Welsh. I think Julie Bendel has done some fantastic things for women's issues. I will not decry that. Um, I do believe that she has frequently incited hatred against transgender people and that puts... But she hasn't. She's defended transgendered people. I've heard her do it. She's done it to me. I've spoken to her about it. She's, tr she's defended transgender but people where it, all she does is cleave to the notion, which is actually a scientific fact, whether you like it or not, which is that someone who has, who has transitioned from a, from, a, from a man to a woman is still technically, essentially, if you wish to but call they, they, it, essentially a man. The I issue think. is not what is right or wrong. The issue is shouldn't you be able to well, hear the, view, the views on both sides of the argument and you can't if if you uh, ban people I mean the Lincoln University a student union it banned the University Conservative Association uh, from social media because the association had pointed out that the university had a low ranking when it came to free speech I mean this is getting ridiculous I, I don't think that's on the same par as criticizing um, who's being invited to speak at universities or to say that um, uh, a democratically elected student union preferring not to um, not to sell papers like the Daily but, Mail. But why would you do it at all? Why are you scared? Of, I'm not remotely scared. Well, no, I know, but, but, but isn't a university exactly the place where there should be this cross fertilization of ideas, of political opinions, a breadth of 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 informed opinion? of contentious opinion, of things which you might find difficult to accept and things which I might find difficult to accept. That's what we should have at universities. Surely that's the point of it. But freedom of speech and freedom of expression for minority groups has traditionally been um, oppressed or made difficult to access by people who criticise their ability to exist, like Julie Bindel with trans people, Marianne She doesn't criticise their ability to no, exist. No, we've been around that. Course, we've been around course, that. Yeah. The principal I I issue here is not the rights or the wrongs of any of these issues. <coughs> It is that the, the university, if you're lucky enough to get to one, is one of the few times in your life when you can go along and hear every view yeah. under the sun. But in fact, what is happening now is that views are being channeled into a very narrow tunnel. And if you're outside of that with your views, you don't get in. I think it's a very exciting time to be a student right now. Um, I graduated 10 years ago. We didn't... Um, the, the progressive movement that's that's flowering now was really only in bud then um, but I think students are turning around and saying no to bigotry and no to hate speech. Well they that's can go along to meetings and say that. It's, it's only a minority who are doing that. It's the minority in the students unions who are doing that and I speak as someone with a kid who's <laughs> at university who says actually all this rubbish, this idiocy, this politically correct nonsense 
has no purchase whatsoever amongst the wider student body. It has a purchase only amongst the perennially active, amongst the political groups within there. And don't forget as well, generally Andrew, are people from oppressed groups. Please yeah. remember that. Is it universities have always been a safe space for straight white men. Uh, what we're seeing now is an increase of, of levelling the playing field uh, for other voices to be heard. So and that will mean no, be, removing, but that will mean removing the platform from one person C and giving it to somebody else. City well, University, so a gay woman, you remove it from a gay woman. City <laughs> University in London, which runs a, a well-known journalism course, voted to ban the Daily Mail, The Sun and The Express. <laughs> What's the point of that? <laughs> Nobody, you don't have to read these papers. Why would you ban them? When you're on a journalism course, it's fabulous. Oh, I think There's daily mail and journalism don't always go hand in hand. No, that's your view. Of the most that's just your view. The that doesn't give you the they're right not, they're to not vote for banning their them. students from buying it anywhere else. They're saying <laughs> in this specific campus, in this specific where campus. people are studying journalism. <laughs> I mean, incredible. if you don't like Daily Mail journalism, I perfectly understand that. Journalists should know what, in your view, it's is bad journalism. It's a commercial boycott. It's perfectly acceptable. You have to remember as well, Andrew, is that it's not just the students. There was the Adam Smith Institute report recently, which suggested that I think it was 85% of university lecturers tended to the left, were liberals, tended to the left. Sure, but, but that's always been the case. And, and, and so, uh, well, that's no, regularly that's always the, been the case. Pretty much. Back in the 60s, they did this comparison, it was something like 60%. So still a majority, but nothing like the hegemony within those universities now is all from this sort of left, liberal, censorious, intolerant and authoritarian... Well, that's your view, I suppose, Abs as well. <laughs> well, yes, I just said it. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of viewpoints, yes, that isn't yes. generally accepted by everyone that that is the view at universities. Right. Oh, well, Welsh, thank, well, thank the left you. Wing we, we need is. to move on. Thank you very, thank you very much, much for being here.